Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're working on something a little different. This is a Hamilton Beach Model 30. I was only sent the the motor part of it. Um, the stand is is gone, and unfortunately the, the you know the, or the stand wasn't sent with it. And unfortunately the stand has the the cord and uh, these two little contacts right here contact a, a part on the stand to give it power. So we can't turn this on to run it and and see if it works or not. But I was told that it needs uh, brushes brush caps which I can tell the brush caps on here do look worn and uh, the switch doesn't change speeds this is a uh, switch for low speed and high speed and a switch doesn't work and we're also going to check the bearings and everything in this um, so let's go ahead and start by checking the brushes and I did I do have brushes and brush caps ordered for this uh, they haven't come in yet but hopefully they'll be here soon and uh, you know we get we can get this wrapped up but we're going to get it apart today and check everything else screwdriver and these brush caps are, are definitely pretty chewed up here and unfortunately these aren't the same size as you know the brush caps that I have here so I do have to order ones and unfortunately they're, they're pretty pricey uh, let me find let me see if I can find some caps here All right here's this is the cap that I just took out of there and this is the, the caps that I have. You can see the size difference in them, even on the threads. They're just a lot smaller. And uh, the brushes, you know, the brushes appear to be the same size. I mean, this one's obviously short, but the springs are a lot bigger. And this spring looks like it's been stretched out here. So the, the new brushes come with springs, even though, like I said, they're, they're pricey. Um, I went and ordered them up and uh, you know we'll have the proper springs for them so you have the proper tension because you know if you don't have enough tension on it you know you're going to have a lot of arcing against the uh, armature and if you have too much then you're just going to wear your brushes down really fast and you see this spring right here I see I'm not sure you know what the deal is with these I mean these springs both look the same length but this one looks like it's stretched out more than this one so I don't think they're even matching springs and you can see you know there's a difference in the brush length there as well so we got we got those coming and, and the caps coming um, I haven't ordered anything else for it yet because I'm not sure what else it's going to need um, but now we got to go ahead and, and uh, basically strip the, the parts off the shaft here now this does have a screw head on here, but it's you know kind of tough to get it get that on there. So I think we're going to just put an adjustable wrench on here. Let's see, that wasn't even really all that tight, so I probably could have used a screwdriver. Oh, I thought I was gonna have to put another pair of pliers on here and crank that. And this is actually the mixing blade here. And you can see these do fold up. So that seems to be decent. Alright, so now we've got a... Um, this is like a, a separate blade that's on there. I'm not sure exactly what the function of it is, but that's on there. And we have to try and get that off now. But we don't want to damage our shaft at all. So we're just going to try and drive it off of here. just pressure fit on there you know so if you can get something on there to, to tap it down without damaging it in any way uh, you can see the line where it sat right there and this is this has a taper to it down here at the bottom so this just goes up until it fits so what we'll do when we put this back on is we'll heat this up and then uh, tap it up as high as it'll go and as it cools it'll it'll be a real nice tight fit on there and you can see you can get that off there without doing any damage to your shaft at all all right so now I'm going to take the the ring off of the switch here. And 
and there's two screws here that, that hold these two halves together that got to come out. It's been a while since I worked on one of these. This is a Hamilton Beach Model 30, in case I forgot to mention it. I'll get these out with the lock washers. Alright. So now, oh, there's a lot of carbon build up in here. Alright, so now, we can see our, this is the upper bearing here. Which I'm, I mean, it, it seems okay. I mean, it turns. Looks like the grease is a little crappy in there. But this will turn. And I don't really see any play in it. There's also bearing down at the bottom, too. Um, but you see on the armature here, it looks like there's some pretty excessive wear on the armature. Um, not sure how well you can see it right here, but there's a, quite a raised ridge here and here. So these brushes have, have you know, I mean, this thing's got a lot of use. You can tell by how deep that's worn into there. So we're going to see if we can get this turned down. Um, not sure. I mean, that's pretty, pretty bad, but I think we can still turn that down and make that work. And this bearing, and the bearing seems to be still good. We'll check the other bearing when we get to that. There's a plate down in here that's held on with three screws. See that needs to be completely clean, that's covered in carbon. Alright, the only thing that's left on here is to get this out of here. And this is pressed on as well. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get this out. You know, we'll drive that off of there, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now we want to take a look at our, you know, everything that's inside here. You can see how dirty that is in there. I mean, that's just full of carbon and old grease. I mean, you can see carbon's all over my hands already. So I'm going to go ahead and try and get some of that off. And then we'll get our clips off of the brush holders. Loosened up here. Because we got to get into here, take this all out so we can get everything clean, and uh, take a look at the switch on there. start pulling this down and we get our switch out of there. Yeah, look at how, how much carbon is in there. I'm going to have to try to figure out something to clean this field coil off. I think I can get some like electronic cleaner. Alright. So as you can see, this, there's like excessive carbon buildup on this thing. Um, I got one more screw in here. I got to get out now. Oh 
Oh, two more. I lied. Can't even hardly see this other screw. It's buried in carbon dust. Alright, there we go. And this, I'm not sure what this is here. It's rated 115 volts, is pretty much all it says. Uh, but, yeah, we've got to do some serious cleaning up on here. And then the switch, we've got to figure out if we can get the switch apart here to clean it. I'm not sure if it comes apart or not. It looks like it's riveted together, but maybe we can get something sprayed down in there, and then we can check to make sure um, that it actually is, is functioning. You know, we can test it with a meter. All right, I'm going to show you what's, what else coming out of here. That's just what I shook out of there. thought I'd get this dirty doing this, but sometimes, you know, you just do. Uh, I've got to find out. Oh, here we go. My little screwdriver for these set screws. Get our brush holders out of here. They're held in there pretty good with all the carbon build up. There's one. You can see these are a little bit larger than the ones like on the mixers. So those are going to get cleaned up too. Alright. Look at all this grease that's in here. Let me get this spring out. And you can see the grease is just nasty, chunky, hard. Alright, this spring needs to be cleaned up too. All of this is just filthy. I don't know if you can, how well you can see down in there, how dirty that is. But, but yeah, this is why you want to do maintenance on your stuff because uh, you know you never know what's inside of them. Um, all right, I'm gonna go through and and get something set up so I can get. Oh, look at that! It's just snowing black out of here. Um, but I got to get this out of here. And like I said, this pressed on, so I gotta get something set up for this here. We got three screws in here that we gotta take out. I almost missed these. screws out. So now should be able to tap this right out now. There we go. And you can see this needs some good cleaning in here too. Um, And we're going to have to, by the looks of it, replace this bearing here too. Because I don't think this bearing is supposed to be in two pieces like that. Or three pieces. So we're going to order up a bearing for this too. Um, I believe the race is still inside of there, the outside race. So. So we'll have to definitely get another bearing for that, which means I'm going to have to pull this inner race off here now. But all right, now that we know what um, what we have to do to get this thing fixed up, where this bearing right here seems to be all right. Um, 
this bearing in here, however, seems to have it be destroyed. The armature is extremely worn down there, so we've got to turn that down. And we've got a lot of cleaning to do. Um, so once I get, get all the parts in and uh, everything, we'll come back and we'll get this all put back together. Alright, now we're set to uh, put this back together. We've got everything all cleaned up. Um, remember how bad this was before, you know, full of carbon and, and uh, everything else. Got our brush holders back in there. Um, got our shaft all polished up and cleaned up. And we got some brand new bearings here from, uh, uh, these were ordered online from uh, the malt mixer man who's got um, pretty much any part that you could ever want from these. We also ordered uh, new brushes, uh, brush caps for these. And uh, being that there was a delay, we were going to order feet anyways but uh he sent along you know four new feet for this too just for the delay in it so i mean that was pretty cool of him um if you want to find him here's his contact information right here uh it's maltmixerman.com and now uh, you go you can see the stuff that he's done he's done restorations and stuff uh you know and parts and all that um very nice work uh great person to deal with there so if you need parts for any of these uh Obviously, we want to go and get it, um, but for now, I think we're going to start getting this thing put back together. Um, we've got a lot of, you know, not a lot of parts, um, but just, you know, we've, we've got a significant amount of parts to put back together. Um, one thing I did run into uh, when I was doing this was um, these bearings on here. These bearings were a bear to get off. Um, nothing I had uh, was really going to be effective at got removing the old bearings on here so I had to kind of make something up you know to, to press them off uh, this one wasn't so bad I was able to take a quarter inch plate of steel and uh, just make a notch in it and uh, this one it, it went over there and I was able to press this down off of that but this one right here I couldn't fit it underneath there and it wasn't a whole bearing anyways uh, the inner race was the only thing that was left on there so that was a chore to get off and one part where I screwed up on was uh, when I ordered the bearings, I seen you know a notation saying to uh, uh, you know that you want to um, uh, mark where your bearing was at, so you put it back in the same place. Well, I had a mark uh, above the bearing there, and uh, you know the only problem was when I ran it back up to that mark and I checked this for fit, uh, my brushes didn't line up with the spot on the armature, and you could see. You know, this is the outer race from the old bearing. You can see there's quite a difference in bearings. These are taller. The new bearings are, are taller. Uh, they have a taller race on them. So, um, you know, what I ended up, it left, made this part hang down more. So I had to uh, press this on a little bit more just to get it up to where everything lined up. But once we got that taken care of, um, you know, it was, the hard part was done. Um, but now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get all this stuff reattached and back together here. And, uh and see, you know, see how it works. Um, I notice these, the bearings don't fit, uh, the races don't fit tight down in this bottom part here. Uh, the original one had this, it's like a plastic kind of paper or some sleeve that went over it, so we're going to reinstall it back on this one as well. Maybe we'll just slip it down in here instead. And that's that takes up any slack that's on that race, and you know, I'm not quite sure why they would have come up with a, a situation like that to take care of that, but yeah, that's what they came up with. So now we just got to get our screws in here. And these are uh, sealed bearings too. There's no, uh, uh, you don't have to pack these full of grease like you, you know, with, with an open uh, cage bearing. You have to pack it full of grease. These are sealed, so I mean, you you could you can't get grease in there if you wanted to. They're already greased and then sealed up. So I guess that makes it a little a little easier.
Yeah, this thing should come right along now with new bearings. Alright, we got this uh, piece here we've got to put in as well. That takes three screws too. steady hands for this sometimes, so just have to use some patience. All right, yeah, this is a really cool machine here. Um, it's, uh, you know, you know it's heavy duty when it's got two sets of bearings in it, and the lower bearing on it, it is pretty significant. I, I imagine that's the bearing that, that takes most of the load on here. The top one is smaller, but it's still a bearing in there. And, uh, you know, I just think it's, uh, it's a good sign of the quality that's in here when you've got good bearings like that. You know, consider the age of these, it's pretty wild. Alright, so we're all assembled down in here. So, let's move on to the upper part here. Uh, like I said, we already got our our brush holders in there. Um, we got to go ahead and get our our uh, whatever this part is attached to it. Probably a RF filter. I'm assuming. Um, make sure that we've got this going in the right direction here. This switch will go there. So this will go like that. I think if I were to put this in backwards, it would just be harder to get everything attached in here. Oh. Brass screws aren't magnetic, dummy. And the fact that this attaches here with these brass screws is just another um, reason for me to believe this is just some kind of a RF filter. But I mean, it's, it's intact, it's not leaking or anything, so... I think a non-brass screw would be easier because uh, then it would just stick to end a magnetized screwdriver, but being that brass isn't magnetic. Don't have that option. This was so dirty and grungy that you know we did uh, we did have to wash this off with some magnetic cleaner, um, or ma not magnetic cleaner. I got magnetic on the brain now with some uh, electric cleaner, um, electrical contact cleaner. Uh, so we got that decently clean. I mean, it looks clean, but I mean, if you rub on on it, of course you still get that tarry crap from the paint or the tape on there. Um, and this on-off switch here, uh, we we blasted this really good through every hole on there with the cleaner and uh, uh, I got to end up with a big puddle of black crap coming out of there so I think it was just loaded up with carbon and then when I tested it afterwards uh, you know you could you could tell it was switching between um, coils in here so 
Oh, that was a good sign. And this is always the fun part. I'm trying to get sometimes get these switches back into place so everything lines up. As a kind of the key slot and the hole here is keyed. And if you don't have it lined up <coughs> perfect, you can't get it in. And sometimes going down in these housings it wants to get cockeyed. Then it gets this is just about the point here where you just want to just take a breath and relax a little bit and let it frustrate you. Let's get a little trim ring started to hold it in place. Maybe. There we go. Alright, make sure our wiring is clear. Um, hmm. I think I gotta get this going in straight first before I tighten this down. You got to have room to get this in, and it's got to go in straight so your screw holes line up. But you also got to really watch out for your wires there. You don't want to get your wires pinched somewhere where you, you know, where it's going to cause damage to them. switch back through again and get a ring on just so it stays put. And we'll just get it started. Make sure our coil's straight. Looks good. Our brush uh, brush leads on the brush holders here. You guys can't see what's going on. I apologize for that. But there you go. You can see we got all of our, our all of our wiring is clear. Oh, can you see in there? I don't even know. I can barely see in there. But brush holder clips are on. Um, our holes seem to be lined up. So we can go ahead and get our um, screws in that attach this. Sixteenth wrench. All righty, got that all snugged up. If I put this motor half back together here, I drop the spring down in there. This is, I believe, this just keeps thrust 
pointing down on the on the motor on the armature being you know down I say down um, this is the top so this would normally be pointing down all right I believe we just go and stick her together here make sure we're facing the right direction here because this does have vents on it that got to be pointing towards the back of the machine because you don't want to see them on the front. The front should just be plain um, plain steel or plain chrome showing there. Alright, that seems to be working. Try to hold this together until I get my screws started. And I don't really want to uh, tighten these up all the way yet until I go and check everything that is lining up good here. Make sure there's no big gaps around here, like it's hanging up on something. So far, it looks good. So now I go ahead and tighten them down. And, be right back. Alright, well, I thought somebody was at the door. Apparently not. Alright, so want to double check one more thing too. I look down this brush holder and make sure that we're going to be seeing square in that armature and it looks like we are. Which means all of our stuff is in place here in the, in the right place. Um, let me get a towel here. Alright, so now we have got to put, start putting all of our parts back on here, um, including this, which is a uh, uh, splash, splash collar, I guess it's called, or whatever. I think what it does is it just keeps funk from getting, when you're using it, funk from getting up inside of here. Um, so we're going to go, uh, I'm going to pause for a minute, I'm going to get this heated up, and um, yeah, I think we got to put this on. We've got to put our, our part that goes here on, um, an upper mixer thing. I'm not sure what this is called either, but uh, that's got to get heated up and pressed on. And then just screw our end on there, throw some brushes in there. And then we're going to see, um, see it's going to be a little hairy to, to try to just test this because I don't want to just take two bare leads and hold them on there. Um, we, I did test the output of the switch through the coils, and you can tell it's switching coils on the, on the field coil. Um, so I believe the switch is working, but unfortunately I don't really have any way to fire this up and test it because I, I you know, I don't want to try to clip wires on here or, or even just touch with bare wires because this thing's got a lot of torque and it's just going to spin. I don't want to short anything out. Um, so we're just going to assemble this one and send it back and hope for the best on it. Um, feeling very confident that everything's going to work here though. So give me a second, let me get set up so I can get that heated up. Alrighty, let's make sure you guys can see here. Yeah. Alright, here goes nothing. There we go. I got heated that up and just dropped it right down on there. I was hoping that uh, I wasn't going to have to try to press that on there because this would have been a royal pain. Um, but that's a done deal. As soon as that's cool, that won't be sliding back off. So that took a little, little longer to heat up just because of the, the thickness of it. Um, but, uh, you know, I think you guys have seen me do that before anyways. Um, and this piece here, obviously that's got to get, go on there. And, and So I'm going to do the same thing with this. This will heat up a lot quicker so I can show you guys exactly how I did it on this one here. Um, and when it came to putting the bearings on there, they were a chore to get on too. I actually took the, the whole armature with the shaft and I put that in the deep freezer. And uh, I heated up the bearings to about 200 degrees. And I thought, well, maybe they'll just slip right on the shafts then where I need them 
and not know that didn't happen. They didn't expand enough. So, um, and being that they were pre-greased, I didn't want to go any any hotter on it and, and start melting the grease that was in there. So, uh, I ended up having to just press them on. Should be stuck on there pretty good. Wow, it's hot. That should be stuck on there pretty good once it cools. Well, I don't think there's really any reason to really drive it, drive it on there. Um, but this right here should be nice and cool now. Yep. See that's on there. So now we just got our last uh, mixer piece here. I really wish I had uh, a way to test this because I, I hate sending things out untested. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, this one's going to have to go out on test, and I'm just going to have to wait to hear back, make sure everything worked on it. But um, yeah, I guess that's how it goes sometimes. Okay, so that should be on there good. All right. So we've got uh, we've got some new brushes here. Like I said, these are courtesy of Malt Mixer Man. Um, he's uh, he's got pretty much any part that you can need for any one of these models here. Um, and if you do have one of these machines, I, I highly suggest you know going to his site and checking it out. And I'll post the link down below too, so you can just click on it to go there. Um, you know, like I said, he's got you know he does you know restorations and repairs on these, but also has a lot of parts for them too. Um, so if there's any, any service that you need, uh, you know, he's he's probably the person to get a hold of. Got our brand new brush caps here. These are. Uh, uh, not, they're not original brush caps, but they are uh, reproductions. But they, I mean, they look really good. They look the exact same size. Um, when trying to find parts for this, I actually came across a place that sold uh, brush caps for these, and uh, they said that they fit, they threaded in the hole, but the cap itself was smaller. And I thought, well, that's that's not going to do. Um, and you can see these springs here that came with it. Originally, you know, your brushes, each brush is a different size, and you can see why because one spring is longer than the other, and uh, they're both got a stretched out part on them. And the springs are important because the springs keep a certain amount of tension. So, we have brand new springs he sent with these brushes, too. So, each each brush will have the same amount of tension on the, on the armature, and uh, that way you don't get premature wear, but you also don't have them jumping off the armature, uh, which makes excessive arcing, which you'll smell. and uh, also cause a lot of heat build up and and cause arc damage to your armature so uh, you know if you want to keep things running good you got to have the right brushes you got to make sure they're and, and the right springs too you got to make sure that they're they're proper in length and everything alrighty um, I'm looking I don't see any other parts here other than the feet that we're sending back with this so uh, at this point I'm going to say this one is a wrap without being able to actually fire it up and test it um, but you know, I'm sure we'll. Uh, I'm sure if there's you know, hopefully one way or another, I'll hear back. Even if it's everything looks good, um, you know, I'm sure I'll I'll hear that. So I, I look forward to finding out how this thing worked out. Here's our old parts. Here are worn out brush caps, uh, springs, and uh, brushes, and our old bearings and, and whatnot. Um, but anyways, this one is a wrap. If you guys have any questions or comments, uh, just leave them down below, and uh, I'll get to them as soon as I can. Um, 
you know, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Let us know that you liked it. If you don't, well, I'm, I'm sorry that you didn't. Um, don't forget to subscribe, and if you want to be notified of, uh, you know, anytime we post another video, click that bell down there so you get notifications, and uh, appreciate it. And as always, we will catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys.